In this video, we're going to receive inventory using locate inventory. More and more frequently, I see the logic behind companies needing a two-step receiving process. First, where they count the inventory that lands right there, unload the truck, and record that it's in the building. Count it and put it in the system. Then after it's counted, put it away. Put it on the shelves. Now, if you're small enough, if you're a small enough company, you have a small warehouse, then it may make more sense to just unload the truck and put it right on the shelf. So I work in the space for inventory software that connects to QuickBooks. QuickBooks users are usually in the small to mid-size space. So typically the projects I work on are anywhere between three users to 30 users. More often than not, those companies that need help from a consultant are the larger companies, right? So I'm seeing uh, a process from the larger side of the three to three, which is a, a two-step process. Um, it reduces foot traffic. So we don't go straight from the truck and walk all the way out of the warehouse. It just doesn't make sense when the warehouse is, is large. So it really makes more sense to have a two-step receiving process where we unload the truck, and receive it to the receiving bay, and then put it on the picking cart or a pallet jack or a forklift, um, log into mobile device, something like this, right? And use the mobile device to record the receipt. So oftentimes um, you might put a barcode on the picking cart or the pallet jack or the forklift and um, use that to scan if, if you need to scan. Uh, you'll take the inventory to the location and then um, scan that you're taking it from the location and putting it away. So that's the process we're going to look at in locate inventory. We're going to receive it, then put it away. Before you start using locate, you need to decide which is going to be better for you. Is it best for you to use the mobile device or is it best for you to use the desktop? or the big screen, the browser for receiving. You can do it either way. So let's look at both of them. Maybe help you decide which way would work best for your workflow, for your process. So we're at the desktop and we see a list of receipts. Over here on the right, it has this button called Create Receipt. This sort of keeps things organized. In other words, once the goods arrive, you'll go create a receipt. Now this opens up some options. For instance, if you are receiving a shipping container, say you ordered from overseas, from China, Taiwan, or something. What I've seen in the past is uh, people order and order and order like every week as, as it needs. I'm not recommending or not recommending that. I'm just saying what I've seen. And then the vendor will just fill up a shipping container, fill up a shipping container, with multiple purchase orders. So with Locate's design here, where we first create the receipt, we can actually pick which purchase orders are coming in. And notice we can create a receipt from an order, where this is listed by order, or create a receipt from a vendor. So we can check the boxes over here, all that belong to the same vendor, and then click Receipt. Also, you'll see this manual option where really it's the part number we're looking for and the purchase order. You've probably seen these documents where they give you a packing slip and it's got PO number, part number, PO number, part number, and the PO numbers might be different. So cool feature there. I'm going to go over that some more in another video. This video, um, we're just going to go over the basics of the receiving screen, but I thought I might point that out. Just more of a reason to explain uh, why there's a create receipt button because it just opens up a world of, of possibilities. Um, we go to this arrow right here. This will take us to the list of receipts that have already been created. I've been kind of playing around. Usually I don't think this list would be so big. This, this list should represent uh, the receipts that are currently being worked on, right? So 
Obviously my screen doesn't really make sense. This is just a demo copy that I've been receiving, but let's, so let's just, uh, let's not create any more receipts from this screen. Notice to get from this screen to that screen, I just click back and forth inbound and back arrow. That's how I'm getting back and forth inbound back arrow. So yeah, I'm not going to create any more receipts. I've got enough. So let's just stay on this screen right here and you'll see uh, the POs that are coming in. Now I do have a plan here. I know which ones I want to receive and which ones I don't. So I'm going to focus on the ones that I want to receive. Oh, and I just noticed here, uh, we don't have this filtered the way I wanted it to filter. So we're looking, we're actually looking at past receipts as well. I don't want to see completed receipts. I want to see not started receipts and in progress. There we go. That narrows it down better to what we want to focus on in this demo. Ha. Huh. Which, okay. Now I do want to create receipts because there are some things there that we want. So I want this guy right here, Thomas Net. There we go. And I think it was this one too, this top one I wanted. So we just created receipt. We could go to the receipt or what that does is it sends it to this screen over here. So now we have other receipts that we've created. Basically we say, hey, the trucks arrived. Let's start receiving it that also does is it changes this screen over on the mobile device a little bit too. So on the mobile device, if we go to receive and click and drag to refresh. So now we see apples to apples order 28, 28, 27, 27, 24, 24. You just got to click and drag, click or swipe, swipe down basically. Um, so this screen shows, the receipts that we're supposed to be working on. And if we click on or tap on this inbound right here, we go to the other screen that's comparable to the one we were just looking at. And from here, say this PO55, I can tap on that, tap receiving as the location we want to receive it into. These are the two receiving locations in the system that we previously defined and set as places we can receive to. We tap on that and that sort of skips the receipt creation step. It changes the status of it, but it sort of feels like it skips the receipt creation step. So now you'll see we have four here. And if we refresh this screen, we'll see we now have four there. So you see the two are intricately connected. Okay, so let's receive something. Be careful what you click on. This will take you to the vendor. This will take you back to the PO. This will take you to the site and this will take you to the user. So this is the, the one you want to click on. This will take you to the receipt. Click on that. Now we're on the receiving screen. It says we're receiving to the receiving location in the main site. The site is a building with an address. So just a nice double check because I am logged in under the main site. I'm going to see orders that belong to the main site. That just helps things, helps keeps things separated. So if you have multiple warehouses, the guy receiving in one warehouse doesn't see all the orders in the other warehouse. He just sees what uh, belongs to him in his world. Or if you're the receiving guy that's watching this video, it belongs to you in your world. <laughs> okay, so let's move my mug out of the way up here and divert our attention to the bottom. We have items to be received, this part number, this part for this PO, and that quantity. Click Receive, and this particular item is unique. It has a lot of tracking values. Um, most people don't have this many tracking values. This is really unique for this company, and so we put in uh, the tracking values. I'm just going to put some bogus things in there. Um, and click receive. Then once you've recorded all of the ones that have been received, if you feel good about what you did, you'll see here it says quantity received past tense and receive. This is the quantity to receive. We already received it. So that's down to zero now. And we can either click finish on this line or just finish the entire receipt. It says, Hey, are you sure? 
yep, I'm sure. Thanks. And now the status of the receipt is complete. Yay. All right, so let's go do another one. Click the back arrow right here. And now you see we're down to three. This is the one I really want because this prepares me for my next video. So I'm going to click on this. And you see I'm receiving a thousand yards of blue cotton fabric. Now I guess I could have turned lot number tracking on for this. I know carpet has dye lots. Maybe fabric has dye lots. So you can turn lot number tracking on for fabric for sure, like you saw in the previous example. Um, only difference it would be one field that just says lot instead of those five or six fields. So here we go, a thousand yards of fabric. Um, we count them, count them, count them, and click receive. Before I do that, why don't we take a look at receiving that with the mobile device. Since we just saw the other one received on this desktop, let's take a look at receiving this on the mobile device. This is order number 27. We'll tap on that. There's our thousand yards of fabric. We could scan the part number right here. That would work or just tap and then put in the actual quantity. So we don't have to go with the quantity that we purchase. Sometimes they ship us more or less, right? So we ordered a thousand yards. We read all the tags uh, to count the bolts or the yards in each bolt. That's what it's called, right? A roll of fabric is a bolt or a, a roll. And just for kicks and giggles, I'll put a higher number and tap receive. So see, no problem, tap finish, and that is now received. Now if we refresh the screen behind us, tap refresh, you'll see it's updated over on the browser as well. That's complete. Now, I bet you're now wondering, well, Lance, what happens if you receive less? Okay, I'll show you. Let's pull this up, pay close attention to the number, PO number 71, tarts, assorted tarts. Ordered 100, but they shorted us. They only gave us 99. So we click Receive, and it leaves one open, waiting to be received at a later time. Hopefully, potentially. Now, of course, they're not going to send it to us. They just shorted us, right? And so we need to close it short. So that was Receipt 28, and we're just going to tap Finish right here. Finish, and there we go. And if we refresh, Order number 28 on the big screen, you'll see it says complete. Even though down here it says we received 99, order number 28 says complete. If we come back here where we create new orders, you'll see it's complete. If we go to purchase order number 28. Wait a minute, did I get my wires crossed? What was the last one I just received? I thought it was 28. I got my wires crossed. If we come over here to the right hand side, we see completed at. And there's a date, so I can sort that to the most recent one. Oh, yep, there's my mistake. This is receipt number 28. The purchase order is number 71. Easy mistake to make. Got to watch that. So I'm going to click on PO71, and we'll see, yep, we ordered 100. And if we click on Receive Purchase Order, we can still receive the last one if we want. I'm going to cancel that. It was PO number 71. So the receipt says closed, but if we come back on the inbound inventory and go to 71, right here also it shows that we're still waiting for this to come in. So just a little navigation exercise and a refresher that this is the inbound and that's what it did with the remaining, is it just put it back in inbound saying we're still waiting for it to come in. So because we're not going to receive it, we're going to close it short. So we'll click on the link to the PO, go over to the right hand side, select actions, and close short all lines. Reason for closing short, it ain't coming. Send email, no, click save. So now if we go back to the receiving world and search for PO 71, it's still there. <laughs> no, it's not. Okay, I just had to refresh. So it's no longer in the inbound area. It shows up in the receiving area, but that's the portion that was received. Okay, so you've seen receiving with a lot number and all kinds of custom tracking values. You've seen 
receiving without a lot number. You've seen receiving a higher quantity than you ordered. You've seen receiving a lower quantity than you've ordered. You've seen receiving on the big screen and you've seen receiving on the mobile device. So hopefully you got a good thorough look at everything. Now, remember when we received, we received it to the receiving bay. It's not in stock. So the next step is go to the put away screen to put it away. Now there's a put away screen on the mobile device. If we come here, you'll see a put away button down here. Tap put away. And it'll show us everything that's in the receiving locations that need to be put away. There's our 99 tarts. There's our blue cotton fabric. Now, default settings for the receiving location are set to be non-pickable, all right? Um, so they must be put away before they can be picked. Now, a good thing to do if you need to fulfill back orders is to create a location called back order. Here, let me show you. We'll pause just for a minute on our workflow and take a look at best practices for setup. So I'm going to go to the site screen and pull up the site. We're on the main site now. I'm going to click on locations, go to the location screen. You see down below I have all these stock locations, all these shelf addresses. Um, I shouldn't call it an address. All these shelf IDs or bin locations, um, rack spaces, pallet positions. They're called all, all kinds of things. I've heard them called all kinds of things. But I created a backordered location and I made the pick order one which means the system will pick from that first and the idea behind that is if you have sales orders that are calling or demanding the inventory it's not efficient to put it away in in stock and then pick it from stock so we want to reduce foot traffic. We want to reduce the number of touches, right? To improve our warehouse efficiency. So instead of carting it all the way back to stock, we set it aside in a backordered location right next to the receiving area. Kind of a, kind of a pickup area um, for back orders. okay? And then we can set the, the software um, and prioritize and say, pick from the backordered areas first. Now I didn't play with this enough, but you know, these areas should be um, two. Other stock areas should be set to two instead of one as a priority of where to pick from, two, two, etc. So if anything's in those areas, then, so that way the system will look at the backordered location first before it looks at everything else. Pretty cool, pretty cool. So. This is not a, a default location. I had to manually create it. it. took two seconds. Okay, so if we come back to this put away area, notice it says put away demand. It's got this big red flag here. There's 99 that we need to put away that's, sipping, that's sitting in the receiving area. They need to be put away. But there's 1,790 that is being called for. So what that means is there's work orders or sales orders that are calling for that quantity and saying, hey, we want it, we need it. So this is a potential back order um, thing. This kind of tells us, well, we should put this in the back order location so these orders can come get it instead of bringing it back to stock. So I'll tap on that tells us how much is allocated, how much is available, it gives us some good information here. Put away demand, so we're gonna be helping some sort of order. Also, it tells us where its sisters are. This is where this same part, this tarts assorted part number, other parts like it are like this. So this is sort of the desirable place to put it. Um, however, because it's on back order for something, we want to put it in the back order location. So I'm going to say move inventory and it says, okay, where? And I tap on or scan, I type in back order location. So there's back order and we're going to put 99 just set aside in the back order location. We'll do that again. 
move. This one also is going to go to the backward location. Oh, I need to learn how to spell. There we go. And there's 1001. Remember that one? That's the one that we had one more yard just for kicks and giggles. We put that in there. And then this one was the one with tons of lot numbers and custom tracking and, and all that. We'll tap move and um, wait a minute, let me go back. Yeah, okay, so that was a put away. We'll tap and then tap move. And we want to go to back order location and it wants us to verify this is all the tracking. So this is nice. We don't have to enter in all the tracking all over again. It just wants us to select um, the tracking. So we select it. Now, let me go back just a second. Um, there, there could be multiple screens like this, right? So this says zero of one selected. So I just tap this, tap one, because I guess potentially when you receive, this, this hardly ever happens, but you could potentially have multiple lot numbers, right? Um, so it wants you to select uh, the lot number that you're receiving. So yeah, we selected it, tap done, and now the move button is colored in. We can tap it and we just move that to the, the backward location. Set it aside so the work order or the sales orders that are calling for that and wants it, it'll send them there to pick it up. Now these guys, they don't have any sort of put away demand, right? So we're just receiving that straight to stock. Let's take a look at the other put away screen while we're on the topic, take advantage of that. Um, we've seen the mobile device a little bit. Let's go look at the browser screen. So drag this up here, tap on operations and then put away right there. So here is put away. Looks a little bit different. If there is put away demand, it'll show up right here in this column and then you'll be able to tap on this. Um, actually there's another button here that you'd tap on and it would tell you which orders is is demanding it in case you're curious sometimes people wear multiple hats right sometimes the receiver is also the shipper and that's a convenient spot he can link right to picking from there and just send it right back out the door to the customer so anyways we're on the put away screen and we just need to move it to where we want it to be to a location of our choice so we'll select that location and tap move. Tap move, select the location and tap move. Now remember by default, the inventory is not available to pick in the receiving location. Is good, that can be kind of chaotic when someone's trying to put something away and as soon as it's received, someone tries to pick it. It's just, it's more organized um, if you say, okay, you can have it now. I'm moving it to the uh, backward location. Um, so people aren't running into each other in the receiving area, right? So just as a recap, you can receive from the desktop, receive from the mobile device, receive lot numbers, you can receive a higher quantity, receive a lesser quantity, you can close it short after you've received it. You can receive multiple POs from the same vendor on one receipt, which is common when receiving a big shipping container. I'm Lance, inventory software expert since 2006. Comment below if you have any questions or requests for other videos. Be sure to subscribe to see more videos like this. And I'll see you on the next video when I consume or use the inventory that I just received.